it is wonderful to have you here joining us. We have a wonderful service ahead. And again, t today what I want to share with you is, is sort of, yeah, what is this new church thing? I mean, it's kind of fun getting, getting emails from people and being able to share with them what the new church is all about, including being able to share it with people like George up in Maine this morning. And to be able to share what it is that, that we believe Christ is asking of us. And more importantly, what is Christ trying to inspire us with? How's he trying to work on our hearts, inspiring us to, to live the lives that I think we all would love to live at a very deep level? So, so the basic starting point I want to come from is, is where does this faith come from? Well, we come from two places. You know, we come from the idea of the Bible, which we consider the Word of God, and we we look at that and we, we read it as this, as this beautiful poem. Beautiful poetry. A beautiful poem that's constantly calling us home. That's constantly reminding us of, as, as famously said by Abraham Lincoln, the better angels of our nature. It is not under any circumstances, under any circumstances, to be weaponized to be used as a tool in terms of who's out and who's in, that's not it. It's about inspiring and committing us to a vision of a world that is kinder, gentler, more loving, more honest, more true. Now part of how we fill that in are these, these set of books by Emanuel Swedenborg. Emanuel Swedenborg is to us what Martin Luther would be to a Lutheran. He's a theologian who, who wrote about this particular loving view of God, and, and his whole point was, we got to get back to what Christianity is really all about. Because he had seen it sort of moving towards, language we would use today, moving towards a club of the frozen chosen. And that's not it. It's not a club. It's a mission. It's a vision. It's a beautiful way to see the world. And when I was thinking for myself, what are, what are the parts that, that I really get excited about with being a, a Christian new church pastor? It, it, it's these things. I mean, just basic things. First off, it's a Christian faith. So we believe, like, well, we may not be quite sure what God says. Like, parts of the Old Testament are sort of hard to wrestle with. But we can always know what God did. And we can look at that through Christ and Christ's model of how to live our lives. And I'll be coming back to that in a minute. The second thing there, God, in, God so much wants to have a partnership with us. That's so key. I think there's a couple ways we could look at God. We could kind of look at God, you know, up in the clouds. God up there, us down here in this big triangle, Right? And some churches put all kinds of layers, including pastors, between God and the people. And we forget that a pyramid, historically, in the end, is a tomb. It's, it's nothing living there. God came down on earth, Jesus came down on earth to show us that mutual love. So we're much more about this kind of partnership. This kind of mutual love and partnership. Mutual love and partnership. Do you know what the word Emmanuel means? It means God with us. Not God against us, not God above us, not God way detached from us. It's God with us. I mean, that's the whole Christmas story, is God with us. And then this beautiful other part, goodwill and faith. Goodwill and faith. Folks, I, I can't, I don't think I could ever overemphasize the importance of goodwill in our particular theology, and I think it's true with all faiths, actually. We believe in this thing, a little aside, called the universal church, that idea that there is this church of one song, and your Jewish brothers and sisters could be in that same church that you are in, even if you're a diehard Christian. Like, it's all the same. We're all pointed the same direction, and part of that is towards goodwill. What that means, really simple. If you're mean, you're not getting it. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Like, we have to hold goodwill for other people. Now, does that mean that there are times where we have to sort of step back from other people because a relationship is toxic or harsh or abusive or dangerous? Absolutely. 
we can make that step back. But even in making that step back, we've got to make a step towards God, and that step is to always keep goodwill. Even for that person who drives you absolutely crazy. A big hint, next week we're looking at pet peeves, so if you want to join us next week, we'll be talking more about that. It's got to have that goodwill. It's Christmas, right? Proclamation of Christmas. Peace, shalom on earth. Goodwill to humanity. I mean, and if God's not bringing goodwill, I think we're worshiping the wrong God. We have to get back to that return to first. Yes, this is all about goodwill. And then what's the faith part? Well, the faith part is trust. This trust that God is holding things. This trust that there, there is one God and, and this God is everywhere and this God holds us and he holds us whether we're deeply broken or whether we're celebrating. He holds us in both. God is there too. Every morning at 8.30 a.m., we do a little Bible study on Facebook Live, on Nutris Live's Facebook page. It was one of the things I was talking about was, was sometimes that just that, that core level of faith, that may be all we have accessible at that moment. I mean, how many of us have had things happen in our lives that we simply can't make sense of? And you better all raise your hands. <laughs> you know, we've all had that, right? So how does faith show up there? Well, well, from a Christian New Church perspective, we roll in the Easter story, and it's like, yeah, even in those moments, God is there too. God's heart, always the first to break. And God joining us, whether our lives are in, a, are in an elevated place or in a really challenging place, life always, these three things, we say this a lot here at New Church Live, always blessed, always broken, always shared. And with that, folks, just again, filled with gratitude, thank you for joining us here today. And let's go out of today just trying to do this, <laughs> just trying to do it a little bit better. Amen. What we're going to do now, friends, is I'm going to offer a prayer. Then we're going to hear the Lord's Prayer. Then you'll have a moment for silent meditation. And then we have an incredibly beautiful song that you are welcome to sing along with at the end of our service here today. So please join me. Lord, thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for bringing us together. For bringing us together. For bringing us together. Help us to live that, Lord. Help us to find ways to take the faith that you have implanted on our heart, to see faith as the eye of love, and to live it deeply to live it with great meaning, a meaning that actually stirs in our heart even more responsibility for our fellow human beings. Lord, thank you, first off, for these amazing students who offered their gift of song. Thank you, Lord, as well, for these wonderful panelists who offered their insights, those true north comments, those compass points of loving the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. Help us to navigate there, Lord. And Lord, help us as well to find home. To find home. Not home that's about moving somewhere else or being someone else, but, but a home, Lord, that is in our souls and our hearts, that is who we were created from all time to be in your creation, in your way, in your will. And as always, Lord, stir our hearts with deep gratitude. Deep gratitude that we join together on Sundays, finding the answers to life in this rhythm. Coming back to first things first. Coming back to music and song. Coming back to you. Coming back to our truest selves. Thank you for that, Lord. Amen.